Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. Today we're going to talk about a fairly controversial topic, and that is the issue of hydrogen versus battery for which is the more efficient electric vehicle. You may have heard yesterday that the Australian Labour Party, which is currently in opposition, is promising $1 billion in the hydrogen industry, and that's apparently going to create lots of jobs and up to $10 billion in value from that promise. On the outset, that seems fantastic. Hydrogen vehicles have a long range, they charge quickly, so what's there not to love, right? But dig a little bit deeper and the truth does come out. And this is where I'm going to break it down for you guys. Let's pretend for one second that we've got 100 kilowatt hours worth of renewable AC electricity. Let's say, for example, this electricity has been captured by solar or wind, okay? It's renewable, just for this example. Let's see the differences between battery and hydrogen powered electric vehicles and how much of that 100 kilowatt hours actually gets to the final product, i.e. the car. All right, so let's talk about battery to start with because it's easier. So to transmit the electricity along the grid is about 90% efficient and so you get 90 kilowatt hours remaining once the electricity actually reaches to your point of charge. The same can be applied also to solar panels in your home or a home battery. It's about 90% efficient. Next, you've got to convert the AC to DC uh, to charge the car's battery. That's about 85% efficient, which will give you about 77 kilowatt hours. And then you've got to actually power the electric vehicle once the electricity reaches the car. And then again, that converts the DC battery power to AC electricity to power the electric motor. And that's about 90% efficient, giving you a final figure of 69 kilowatt hours available to your electric car if you were to use 100 kilowatt hours of renewable AC electricity using a battery powered electric vehicle. Let's go over to the hydrogen side now. Well, first of all, I'm going to discard methane. That's one way of capturing hydrogen, but really, I think that's actually quite ridiculous because you're actually using fossil fuel to capture hydrogen and you end up with actually with less energy than you would if you had burnt that fossil fuel. So we're going to scrap methane straight away. And we're going to look at electrolysis, which is probably the most efficient way to capture hydrogen. First, you've got to convert the AC electricity to DC. And again, that's about 95% efficient, giving you 95 kilowatt hours. And then we subject the water to electrolysis. And that's basically splitting the hydrogen from the oxygen. And that requires a ton load of electricity. And that's only about a 75% efficient process, giving you 71 kilowatt hours to play with. Then you've got to somehow transport or store that hydrogen. So you've got to actually compress it either into a compressed gas or into a liquid form. Compressing it to a gas is 90% efficient and it will give you 64 kilowatt hours remaining in that process. Or you can liquefy the hydrogen, which is 65% efficient. It's actually a harder process to make it into a liquid and that will give you 46 kilowatt hours remaining. Now look at the difference between hydrogen and battery at this point. So already, before we've even transported the hydrogen to a filling station, we are already behind the eight ball compared to a battery. But we'll get back to that in one second. Then you've got to transport either the compressed hydrogen or the liquefied hydrogen to your uh, point of filling, like I said. If you transport compressed hydrogen, it's 80% efficient because you've actually got to store it cryogenically, and that will give you 51 kilowatt hours remaining. If you transport a liquefied version, it's 90% efficient. And again, that obviously accounts for road transport or, or any other type of transport, which will of course take energy to actually transport the hydrogen to your filling station or otherwise. So if you transport compressed gas, it's 51 kilowatt hours remaining. If you transport liquefied hydrogen, it's 42 kilowatt hours remaining. Then you've got to actually fill your car with the hydrogen from the filling station. And that's about 50% efficient to uh, convert the compressed or liquefied hydrogen into a fuel cell. And that will give you 26 kilowatt hours from a compressed form or 21 kilowatt hours from a liquefied hydrogen form. Then you've got to actually power the electric motor, converting it back to AC electricity. And again, that's about 90% efficient, similar to a battery, uh, and giving you a grand total of either 23 kilowatt hours or 19 kilowatt hours, depending on how you transport and store the hydrogen. As you can see, the numbers don't really stack up to power a hydrogen electric vehicle. It's about three to four times less efficient using hydrogen compared to electricity to power your electric car. And guys, the source for this infographic is from cdn.greenoptimistic.com. I will leave the link in the description below if you want to look for it yourself. So let's have a look at a summary of battery electric vehicles. Advantages are that they have a higher energy efficiency than hydrogen electric vehicles, like I've shown you in the previous slide. 
You can charge your battery electric vehicle from rooftop solar, which you could install in your own house. Electricity is far more versatile. You can plug your car into a, a wall socket that's available anywhere in Australia or around the world, really. Disadvantages, sure. Battery electric vehicles charge slower than hydrogen for now. Charging times are getting faster over the years. Batteries are obviously heavier and not as dense as hydrogen for now. And like I said, I always put for now because, you know, battery tech is improving year on year. Let's have a look at hydrogen electric vehicles. Yes, they do charge faster, much faster than battery. In fact, almost as quick as a petrol powered car. They've got a capacity for much denser energy storage, which uh, translates to increased range. And I'll get to that in one second. They are far less energy efficient than battery electric vehicles, which I've shown you in that infographic. And because of this, they're actually more expensive per kilometer than battery electric vehicles for an equivalent range. There is a lot of capital required to fund end-to-end -end production of hydrogen to your hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. And the fact that Labor has to promise $1 billion in capital to kickstart the hydrogen industry in Australia tells you something. And there are far more steps involved in hydrogen production compared to electricity required for battery electric vehicles. This gives an opportunity for more profiteering along each step, but also conversely, more jobs can be created from the hydrogen production process. Hydrogen is useful as a commodity for export, and Japan seems to be a big player uh, in hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, and that's where we can possibly export all this hydrogen that Labor wants to produce off to Japan, helping our export market. Also useful possibly for long-range transit, for now, because of the increased energy density uh, and also faster charging times. Useful possibly for intercity trains, buses, and maybe even hydrogen planes. So this is my summary. There is a large capital expenditure for hydrogen electric vehicle infrastructure, which may not achieve payback in time for battery electric vehicles to catch up with regards to range, energy density, and charging times. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that commentary. I'm looking forward to hearing all your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you're about to buy a Tesla, use my promo code THOMAS7208 to score 6 months of free supercharging. Happy charging!